It's Mnemonic and welcome to yet another guide, another beginner's guide, and I'm going to be covering another two NPCs that you can find in every single town in the game, in all five towns in the game. Uh, doesn't matter which one you choose to go to, you will always find these two NPCs, and they are called Kadala and also Defense Vendors. So starting off with Kadala, this is going to be an NPC that you're going to be interacting with a lot in this game. Um, it's pretty much a gambling NPC, if you will. That's the best way I can describe this for you. So you gamble with her. What do you gamble? Luckily for us, it's not necessarily gold, so you get to keep all of your gold. But uh, you gamble these resources down here. You can see I can gamble 75 of these resources to get a random one-handed mystery weapon. And you can get rare items or you can get lucky enough to get a legendary item. You can get an ancient legendary item. You can get a primal legendary item and you can also get the magic items the blue items uh, that's everything that she can give you she will not be giving you the gray the white the common items uh, but it starts to range anywhere between magic up to primal if you get that lucky <clears throat> or if you can even get a primal since you have to do a greater rift level 70 by yourself to unlock those so that is what she can offer you now there's three tabs here this is the weapons tab so so through the weapons tab you can actually gamble for any weapon that is available in the game weapons and off hands so one-handed weapons two-handed weapons a quiver if you're playing a demon hunter an orb if you're playing a wizard a mojo if you're playing a witch doctor and also the Phylic Tree if you're playing a Necromancer, which is the newest class, the newest addition to the game. Now, they don't all cost the same, like for weapons, she's going to require 75 of this currency to gamble for one, so you give her 75 and she'll give you a random two-hander, right? And 25 for the offhand weapons. And it's the same exact thing for all of these three tabs. So if I want a piece of gear, a piece of armor, you can get gloves, helm, boots, chest, all of the, the armor, and you can also get the shield. And the armor, all of it, all the pieces cost only 25 each. And then the trinkets are the most expensive trinkets. We're talking about the jewelry pieces here, so the rings and the amulets. The amulets are the most expensive, they cost 100 each, and the rings cost 50 each. So, again, pretty expensive as well, but compared to the neck piece, this is definitely the most expensive one by far. Um, now, where do I get this currency, and what is this currency called? So, that currency right there, it's called Blood Shards. And you can see how many of those you have over here. When you open up your inventory, you can see right here next to the gold. It has the same icon there. And they are called blood shards. If you hover over it, it will give you a small explanation. Um, there's like a number there. And then the maximum number of blood shards you can carry can be increased by achieving a new greater rift solo personal best. So what that means is when you do a higher greater rift than what you have done so far you will increase the amount of blood shards that you can carry before you're capped so you do have a cap of how many of these you can carry in my case i can carry up to 1640 blood shards I can increase that number if I do a higher greater rift than I have done. So, so far on this character, I have managed to do a greater rift level of 114. If I do a 115, that number will increase by a little bit. If I do a 116, it will increase a bit more, and so on and so forth. And the way how you actually get the blood shards is through two different NPCs. 
Number one, and the most easiest and like the most common way you can get these is by killing Rift Guardians. It doesn't matter if it's killing Rift Guardians in a Nephilim Rift or in a Greater Rift, you will get Blood Shards for both. But if you do a Greater Rift, you will gain more Blood Shards, especially... I mean, if the Rift is higher than a Greater Rift level 60, you will gain more Blood Shards than you will gain from doing a Nephilim Rift on the... Torment 13 difficulty, of course, I'm assuming you're doing this on Torment 13. If you go lower than Torment 13, you'll get less, pretty much, obviously, because the difficulty is lower. Quite straightforward. So the higher the difficulty, the more blood shards you will get at the end of the rift, once you kill the rift guardian. And then the second way how you can actually get blood shards is to a blood thief goblin. So there's like a goblin that you can randomly get in either Nephilim Rifts or when you are killing things in the open world and anywhere in all of the acts you can come across a blood thief and this blood thief will give you a number of blood shards according to what difficulty you're on. So if I'm on Torment 13, that's the maximum amount of uh, blood shards I can get through a blood thief and it's like, I don't know, like... 200 or so if you're in a party you'll get some more than that if you're in you have a two-man party going on or three people or four it, it's really you will get that much more but that's the maximum amount if you're in a four-man party and you find the blood thief and you kill it that's the maximum amount of blood shards you can get unless you're doing a really really high greater rift and you'll be able to get uh, that much more so that's the two ways in which you can get blood shards so basically, as you're playing the game, you will be getting some of those. Um, and then when you have a good amount, let's say you have four, five, six, eight hundred blood shards, you come over here and you basically gamble them. You gamble all of them and try to get or find an upgrade that way. So that is the entire purpose of Kadala. There is actually a D3 planner. This is like a, a spreadsheet that I'm going to leave in the link down in the description below if you're interested in that and this is super super useful because it will actually show you what items Kadala can give you according to your level and according to what class you're playing on and it's very very nice because that way you will be able to tell a little bit better maybe what you should gamble at what level and so on and so forth you'll be able to plan things out a little bit better and maybe try to get the item that you're actually looking for you'll have better odds at least of getting that or even if you have a level 70 and you really want this specific legendary but you just can't seem to get it ever you can maybe make a level one character and it's available at level one and that way if you actually do get a legendary through blood shards that's going to be the one that you're gonna get so you'll have much better odds of getting it on a level one and if you need that in your cube then it doesn't really matter what level it has because all you want is the legendary affix the blue or the um the orange part there the orange text of the legendary so in this case where it says soul harvest now stacks up to 10 times that's the affix um so it can be very 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 useful and i'm going to leave that down in the description of this video the other npc that i wanted to talk about so you can see here on the minimap there's like these bags everywhere where you see these bags those are merchants those are vendors and most of these like there's one right here for instance most of these are just gonna allow you to repair your gear through them just like it works with the blacksmith and buy random pieces of gear that you're probably not really gonna use um, so that there's not really much to talk about here like armor weapons and then you can repair gear and that's basically all of them but there is one and it's not this, that's the same exact thing as I just said, as you can see. But there is one of these that has the exact same icon that is known as a fence vendor. Now, these are a little bit more important. So as you can see right here, this is Redak the fence. So fence vendors. These are a bit more important because these guys do the exact same thing like all the other merchants, but they offer you trinkets as well. Not just armor or weapons, they actually offer you trinkets as well. And the reason why this is so nice 
is as you're leveling up, let's say you make a new character <clears throat> and you're leveling up or a new season launched and you're level one and you just started leveling, the trinkets are a very, very nice way to gain some very good damage upgrades very fast, propelling you and making your leveling that much more efficient for a very, very low cost. So all you do is come here, these amounts of gold is nothing in this game, even at level 1 you're, you're gonna be able to afford this very very fast, and they will just give you so much damage. Now what you want to be looking for here, when you're leveling up, because that's probably when you're gonna use these, because at level 70 uh, these are just gonna be a joke, they're gonna be really bad for you, this is just a magic item at level 70, you'll be getting so many legendaries, and even if you don't, the drops usually are going to be better when you're killing than whatever the vendors are gonna sell you, these are kind of in the game to help you along if you really just keep getting unlucky and you can't seem to find a neck piece to drop for you and this is still an empty slot so you come over here and okay i'll at least buy something from the vendor for now and until a neck piece drops for me so while you're leveling up this is very good because as a primary stat they can roll damage right there and what that does, it just it straight up boosts your damage by so much. Because you don't really need like attack speed or fire, things like that. They do help, but they don't really give you that much uh, of an increase. What you want to be looking for is just solid damage stick, stick like that. Um, that's going to be the most damage you can get while leveling. And as I said, this is very important because this will allow you to maybe increase a torment, go from torment one to torment two or three, um, because it just gives you that much damage. It scales very, very well with your character when it's uh, like a low level, I don't know, level 10, level 30, just the best thing you can have, the best stats you can have while leveling up by far. And in this case here, I just interacted with this and this is like the perfect example because in this case i just found a neck piece that gives me that specific stat and you can get that stat on rings as well but this vendor here doesn't have a ring that gives me damage so in this case what i would do is i would purchase this amulet equip it and then I would go look in other acts, so I'm in act 1, I would go look in act 2, find the fence vendor there and see if he's actually selling some rings with a damage stat stick on, on top of them, so I can get that much more damage out of that. And um, as you continue to level up, um, they will upgrade these rings and these neck pieces. So if I'm level 9 and I come over here, I'll find a level 9 amulet. But then at level one like well, let's say you hit level 17 for instance the neck piece might have been upgraded to a level 14 now because you unlocked a level 14 neck piece that uh, exists that this vendor actually sells and so you can buy that and it gives you that bit more damage because it's now a level 14 neck piece and it's like uh, a nice damage increase a nice increment as you're leveling up so that's why i wanted to mention Ven fans vendor they're actually quite popular with people um while they're leveling up this is the place to go to get some nice juicy upgrades as you're leveling up so very important to mention this npc as well Plus, it's in town, and I'm covering the NPCs in town, so uh, I had to mention that one as well. So that's basically everything that I wanted to talk about with these two NPCs. That's the fence vendor for you and Kadala. Then for the, my next video, I'm actually going to make a guide regarding the followers. There's three followers in the game, the Scoundrel, the Templar, and the Enchantress. And I'm going to make a video explaining those three, what they are, how they work, uh, the abilities that they have, how they, how it functions all together, pretty much. So that's going to be the next guide from me to you as the next video. But for today, we are done. I hope this has helped you out. I hope uh, now at least you understand a little bit more maybe about Kadala and what she's doing and how that all works and this and that and how to get blood shards. Let me know down in the comments below if this was helpful at all to you. Maybe if you're a newer player or a returning player who hasn't played the game for a while and maybe forgot about some of these things or some of these things are maybe new to you. Um, feedback is always appreciated. If you're new, subscribe. 
it's free and thank you so much for being here for watching my guides there's plenty more to come and until next time stay safe take care and peace out